I live in a rural part of Texas, and it rains a lot. Therefore, there are many small ponds and creeks. I used to love to explore them and go fishing. We had a very small pond on our property which was filled with all kinds of fish. Some were big, some were small. One morning, I woke up and they were mostly gone. The few that were still there were in the deepest part, all huddled together. The bottom looked to have been torn up. It seemed that some kind of animal must be responsible. My dad suspected a bird, but my young 13-year-old imagination thought of things like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot. I decided to investigate further. I set off the next day with my bag packed full of fishing bait. I also brought towels and goggles in case I wanted to go for a swim. There was a huge line of trees near our property that I was not supposed to pass. However, this time, I decided to break the rules. I went past the line of trees this time because there was a pond on the other side that I had never fished before. This was exciting for me and I thought I might even find the mystery creature that visited our pond. It was 4pm and the sun went down at around 6. Even still, I was determined. I estimated that it would be about a 25 minute walk there and back, so I didn't have much time. I was filled with excitement when I arrived. Unlike all my usual ponds, the fish at this one were jumping out of the water. I instantly put my stuff down and was about to get started fishing when the pond went still and I got an eerie feeling. I thought my shadow might have scared the fish, but then I saw something moving quickly in the water and it was so big that I jumped back instinctively. As I mentioned, I live quite far from the other people so it would be unusual for an alligator to make its way there. I saw a huge tail-like thing. The reason I say thing is because it wasn't your typical tail. It looked weirdly forked and thick like you could use it to swim and walk. It came out of the water and dove down. This pond is not completely cut off from the outside. It has three small creeks that deliver water into it. So it's not impossible that a larger fish could make its way in. I was so curious that I decided to put my goggles on and look under. It was a fairly clear pond for what I'm used to around here, and what I saw made my skin crawl. I saw six black creatures that were between four and seven feet long. I jumped back again trying to catch my breath when one of them surfaced. It had all black eyes with shiny black skin and strange bumps on the lower half of its body. I thought it was going to attack me, but as I approached the land, the other creatures started to swim back into the creeks and leave the pond. The one who was eyeing me turned around reluctantly and followed the others. I'm lucky to be alive because whatever those creatures were, they are unknown to mankind. There are still undiscovered creatures in this world, and I hope I don't find another one. I remember waking up one night to the sound of scratching coming from inside my bedroom. Rubbing my eyes, I sat up and listened, placing a hand to my ear. The sound seemed to be coming from inside the walls, and it was moving. I was a curious little girl back then, so I got out of bed and followed the noise out of my room and down the hall. My parents were fast asleep, so I had to tiptoe the entire way. The sound led me all the way down to my basement. After opening the basement door, I descended the stairs and followed the scratching to a crawl space I didn't even know I had. It was a small square-shaped opening in the side of a wall, just big enough for a child to squeeze through, with a little door that was slightly ajar. Since I'd already come this far, I saw no reason to turn back. My curiosity was at its peak, so without hesitation, I got down on my hands and knees and crawled inside. It was dark and cramped, but I kept crawling until the sound suddenly disappeared. I paused for a moment, confused, waiting for the scratching to return, but it never did. Just as I was beginning to think that I imagined the whole thing, I heard a small squeak behind me and turned around. To my absolute horror, a pack of rats were lurking behind me 
blocking the way I came. They were large, repulsive creatures with beady red eyes and sharp, jagged teeth. I screamed at the top of my lungs and started to crawl further into the tunnel as the rats gave chase, eagerly snapping their teeth behind me. I didn't know where I was going, but I had to get away. Unfortunately, after a few seconds of crawling, I came to a dead end. I cried in terror. I rolled onto my back and watched helplessly as the rats approached me. I quickly raised both of my feet off the floor and bent my knees back, preparing to kick them. Stay back, or else, I stuttered, thinking the rats would actually understand me and scurry away out of fear. But the rats weren't scared of me. And why would they be? Nosy little girls in pajamas didn't come down here all that often so I must have looked like an all-you-can-eat buffet to them. I sobbed as I laid there, trembling, bare feet raised in the air, waiting for them to attack. As if they were taunting me, they continued snapping their teeth as they slowly closed in. There was no way out of this, and my parents were still asleep. I regretted ever coming down here. Without warning, the rats all lunged at me, ready to feast. And that's when I blacked out. I ended up back in my room. Beads of sweat dripped from my forehead, but other than that, I was unharmed. It was just a terrible dream, or at least that's what I thought, until I heard a sound coming from under my bed.